In this video, I'm gonna go over all the crucial components in creating voice AI systems. My intention is to answer the first question you get when you're introduced to voice AI. How do I actually build anything with it? And how do I actually build something effective? This video is aimed more for people less familiar with the voice side of AI. So if you have extensive experience with voice AI, then you might find this video a little bit less valuable. However, you can still definitely take value from this video as for each component I discuss, I'm also gonna share any lessons I learned that help to improve that component. I'm making this more beginner type video as I believe there might be new people introduced to voice AI due to the release of the real-time API. And after my last video, I've potentially now been introduced to voice AI orchestration platforms like Vapi, Synflow, or Plant. If you have any sort of experience building with AI or AI agents, then most of these components are gonna be extremely familiar to you. However, another question I also wanna answer in this video is how do we approach these components differently now that the medium is voice instead of just the basic text or chat side of AI? Also, just before we get into this first component, I wanted to let you know that Artillo AI is looking to hire an AI developer, either a freelancer or potentially part-time per project basis to join our team. So if this is something you are interested in, just go into the description, find either my email or my LinkedIn, reach out to me with your resume and we can go from there. Okay, so the first component is the prompt. Now, if you've done any work with AI, you've created a prompt before. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail about what it is. The prompt is simply the place where you create the instructions for how the LLM should think, act, and speak. Now, from my experience, creating the prompts for voice AI is a lot more difficult than just your regular AI chatbots. I'll give you an example as to why that is. If a text chatbot was to ask for a user's email, it would just simply ask. Then the user would type in their email, hit enter, and we would go from there. But if a voice AI agent asks for a user's user's email during the conversation, there is a good chance that when that user says their email, the transcription model will transcribe that incorrectly. As obviously transcription models have not been trained on every single personal email that everybody has. And so we have to fix this within the conversation via the prompt. Now, the way I would go about solving this issue via the prompt looks something like this. The inputs you get are coming from a transcription model and can be prone to minor spelling errors. When asking for a user's email, make sure to recite the email letter by letter back to the user using the phonetic alphabet and wait for confirmation. If after the second attempt you are still incorrect, say sorry about this issue. It's most likely due to the transcript I'm getting has spelled your email wrong. Would you be able to help me by spelling out letter by letter? Now, if the user complies and does spell out their email letter by letter, there is a very good chance that the transcription model will get it correct as obviously single letters is something that these models have been trained on extremely well. That example ties into the first lesson I have when it comes to prompting and that is to let the AI know what context it is working in. So essentially you can just tell it you are in a voice AI orchestration layer, your inputs are coming from a transcription model and your outputs are going to be sent to a text-to-speech model and are therefore the direct speech in the conversation you are having. From my experience, this just helps the model to understand the potential issues and also get it to not take all inputs as 100% truth as it is aware that there could be potential spelling issues due to that transcription model. Okay, the second component is the LLM model. Now it is directly linked to the prompt in the sense that it is also part of the brains of the voice AI system or agent and choosing the right LLM model is a little bit more complex than just picking GPT-40, that being the most well-known model. When choosing a model, we are looking at three different things, quality, speed, and price. Now, luckily I found a website that compares different LLM models on those three exact aspects and it is extremely useful to keep up to date with different models as well as helping me choose what LLM models I'm gonna use for my client builds. Okay, so this is the website. It is called Artificial Analysis. As you can see, it says it's an independent analysis of AI models and API providers, which is exactly what it is doing. And if we look at this kind of first page, as you can see, we have the three aspects we are looking for when it comes to our voice AI models, like quality, speed, and price. So we can kind of look at these graphs and actually make a decision on what LLM model we want to use. For example, the highest quality, the highest reasoning. We have quite obviously O1 Preview. That's the kind of open AI reasoning model. We then have O1 Mini, 1.5 Pro, GPT-40, Sonnet, O Mini, etc. Speed. This is output tokens per second. So in a second, how many tokens are being outputted on average? As you can see, we have Gemini 1.5 Flash at 211 tokens being outputted per second, which is double the outputs of the second highest and second fastest model, that being GPT-40. Then we have the price. This is all in USD per 1 million tokens. As you can see, Gemini 1.5 Flash is the cheapest. Then we have 40 Mini. Then we have the preview at number one. O1 Mini a little bit cheaper at 5.3. GPT-40 a little bit cheaper than the O1 Mini at 4.4. Now that bar chart is quite useful just to get a quick glance at how they are doing compared to each other. But then these graphs down here are also really, really useful. So as you can see, this is the quality versus price chart. O1 preview 
you in the top right corner because it is the most expensive but the highest quality and then we look at the most attractive quadrant which is obviously as high quality for as low price and if we look at that section you can see we have gemini 1.5 pro in one of the more attractive parts of the graph i.e it is a low price at 2.19 dollars per million tokens but it has a very high reasoning and quality power at 79.7 out of this you know kind of independent analysis of quality and we also have gemini 1.5 flash in a pretty attractive quadrant with 0.13 usd at a million tokens and also a pretty high intelligence O1 mini all these models are giving us more attractive and then if we look down lower you know the llama 3.18 billions much less intelligent and also not much cheaper it is not much cheaper llama 3.18 billion is 0.15 per million usd tokens and 1.5 flash is actually two cents cheaper at a lot higher quality then we also have quality versus speed in this graph we can really see how dominant gemini 1.5 flash is for that speed versus quality it is the only model in the kind of attractive quadrant it is extremely fast at 211 tokens outputted per second and an extremely intelligent model so right now gemini 1.5 flash is actually the model i've been using for my kind of easier builds and then gemini 1.5 pro the one for being the model i'm using using for my more intelligent high quality builds so this is obviously always going to be changing and i do test different llms because sometimes different llms work better for different use cases it's most likely just to do a fine tuning how they were fine tuned so it's always worth testing different llms but this website is incredibly useful to get a better understanding of the model landscape as a whole also one lesson i've learned when it comes to choosing the right llm is to just try a bunch of different ones and see how they act in your voice ai conversation and your you know use case when you're testing just see how you feel about the model in the conversation and then after the conversation actually take into consideration price as the conversation itself helps to show you the quality of the model the reasoning as well as the speed because obviously you know if the flow of the conversation is good then the model speed is likely also pretty good the third component is the transcription model now with this component there isn't really much that can be changed or improved and the transcription model is simply what takes the audio and turns it into text that will be then later sent to the llm model you can play about with different transcription models on vapi and see if they potentially improve the conversation at all but most platforms don't even let you do that so like i said there's not really much you can do to improve the transcription models however there is just one lesson i've learned when it comes to improving your transcription model and that is to boost certain keywords in the transcription okay so the way that we actually boost keywords in vapi is we go into the api reference and actually do this within the api itself what we do is go into the update assistant paste in an assistant ID, which you can grab in the dashboard, just go onto your assistant and then up in the top under the assistant's name will be a copy assistant ID. Then we press send and then we get our kind of assistant JSON. Now, what we want to do is go into the body, then choose the transcriber, which is a deepgram, Nova 2, smart format, whatever, it does not matter. Then what we do is go into the keyword section right here. So let's say in my voice AI conversation, we're saying Artillo AI a lot, but the deepgram transcriber is obviously not used to people saying Artillo AI and isn't trained on that. So the way we can actually boost that word is just by doing Artillo AI colon and then some sort of a number. So we can do one, two, three, four, fifty. It just depends. The number correlates to how high it's being boosted. Now, usually I try to keep it decently low between three to five as when we put it too high up, then our transcription model is going to think a lot of words that aren't Artillo AI are actually Artillo AI in the transcripts. So we want to keep it at a good medium. Then we would just press this plus button and add another keyword and add another one and add another one and we can do about 100 i believe deep grams limit is and that can be very useful for improving your transcripts the fourth component is the voice model when it comes to the voice model again we are looking at three aspects quality speed and price again there's not much you can do with the voice model the only real thing you can do is play around with different voices and models in the platforms themselves something i noticed is that different platforms actually sound different even when i have the exact same voice model and voice selected on them i'm assuming this is something to do with how they split the words for streaming to being sent to the voice ai so test different models and different voices on different platforms to find the one that actually works well for you also you can improve the voice in the conversation a lot via the prompting you're doing for example 
example, if you are trying to get to the AI to say an order ID or a phone number, then you can prompt it to output the number as a word. So one, i.e. O-N-E, rather than just the number one, which can help the voice model when it comes to reciting the number back. With voice models, artificial analysis does have a text to speech section, which is quite useful, but obviously there's no real way you can qualitatively decide what is higher quality. You know, everything is kind of subjective when it comes to these voice models. So like I said, test all the different voice models out there with the different voices as well, you know, male, female, Australian, American, young, old, etc., until you find the one that for you works well. Okay, the fifth component is the tools or functions. If you've built any AI projects in code, voice AI orchestration platforms handle tool calls a little bit differently. They take a server URL, like a webhook URL, where they will send a request with certain JSON data, like different parameters, the user's number and the time, different things like that. And then they expect a JSON webhook response back. You can very easily build tools on platforms like make.com, Pipedream, NA10, really any automation platform. All you need is a webhook module, all your logic for the tool, and then a webhook response module. Or you can also build a tool with Flask and Replit, deploy that, and then you know use your Replit server URL with also your unique Flask identifier, and then send stuff there. And then as long as you're you know returning a response back, you know that works too. Now, there is also one other way you can create tools, and that is by building a custom LLM. When you're creating a custom LLM, it's very similar. Again, Vapi and other platforms that do allow custom LLMs is going to be expecting some sort of a URL and then with chat completion. So, you know, it's going to be sending an LLM request to that URL and it is expecting a response back usually as a stream. So that LLM response stream can be sent to the text to speech models for creating the voice. And if you do create a custom LLM, then you can define your functions in your code just like you would normally. So on Python, you know, you would just do DEF function name parameter and then your function logic within the Python function itself and the custom LLM will just call the functions within the code itself. So this way it is exactly like you were to code AI for your simple text completions or chatbots. One of the first lessons I learned for improving tool logic is to offload as much reasoning from the main AI voice agent to the tool. I'll again give an example of what I mean by this. Let's say our voice AI agent is booking someone into the calendar and we're trying to book them in for Tuesday, 22nd of October, 5 p.m. UTC. Now, most calendar booking softwares would expect that date to be formatted in the ISO 8601 format. So that date would become 2024 10 22 T 17 0000 Z. We wanna allow the agent to simply send that first message being Tuesday, 22nd of October, 5 p.m. UTC rather than getting it to format it during the conversation or as it's sending the tool call so that we can offload some of that reasoning from it to the tool. It's not that AI can't format a date. It's that we would have to prompt it to format the date when sending it for the tool call. And this is just making the agent more bloated. It's a guaranteed way to increase errors by giving your AI agent unnecessary bloatage when it comes to instructions and responsibilities. And within tool logic, we could just be much more precise without AI's randomness. The second lesson for tool calling is to look for ways to improve the tool call speed. We simply want the tool to run as quickly as possible so that we don't have to make the person on the other side of the phone wait. There's not really much else for me to say other than to restate how big of a difference it is when someone is waiting 10 seconds for your tool to run compared to the agent saying, yep, let me check if there is space at 10 p.m. on Tuesday. Oh, yes, there is. Do you want to book it in rather than waiting extra time? The last lesson I have for tool calling is to reduce the amount of AI within your logic. I know this might sound weird coming from someone who lives and breathes AI and and, you know, I definitely think it's an important technology, but I'm also a realist and I know that there is a level of randomness to AI and we want to reduce that randomness so that we have less issues. And also just removing AI does help to increase the speed of your tool logic. Okay, so the sixth and last component is the knowledge base or RAG. Now, RAG is crucial in most voice AI system builds. It's the component that allows your agent to get company context that, you know, it otherwise would not have. When it comes to voice AI RAG versus, you know, normal text versus normal text-based RAG, there is really not much of a difference with the two. So any sort of RAG knowledge, any sort of RAG rules that are for text-based is pretty much the same for voice AI. I do however have one lesson I learned for RAG when it comes to voice AI. Since RAG is almost like a tool or a function itself, I also like to reduce the amount of reasoning needed to you know, perform a good and high level RAG. So instead of just giving the agent five chunks of context that you know it doesn't know what to do with, we instead 
add an AI step before it being sent back. That helps to format the context as well as usually just giving instructions on how to use the context to answer the user's question and how to actually incorporate that into the conversation, which, you know, really helps for the flow of the conversation. You know, this way the context is just more digestible. And like I said, it's better for the flow of conversation. Okay, so those are the six core components when it comes to voice AI. Like I said, if you have built with AI or AI agents, all of those were very familiar to you, nothing new. But I also wanted to show you those kind of lessons that I've learned, which are differentiated via voice, which are different because of the voice medium compared to just your normal text medium. I hope this video helps some of you understand the differences between the voice side of AI and your normal text or chat based AI. Also, I hope the lessons I shared with you also help out with your voice AI projects or whatever you are thinking about doing in voice AI. Also, like I said at the beginning, we are hiring. So, you know, if you are still here and watching and, you know, like the content I do and want to join my team, then reach out to me either via my email or my LinkedIn with your resume.